yeah, just yeah, yeah. thought back and goes, yeah, that all seemed to just happen. We, I agree with him. Yeah, me too. <laughs> first day was good. Uh, it's like the first day of school. Everybody's got their lunch made uh, early and <laughs> backpacks packed and they're all ready to go. Um, so very sharp, very crisp, great effort, great energy. The key is to back it up. You know, got to do it uh, multiple days. Uh, so really pleased with the first day, but um, not, not, not ready to celebrate yet. We need a, we need a good week before, uh, before we really get ready. Is Demarcus just kind of building around to the side? He did a lot of stuff um, before we started at 11. So we had a lot of action on the floor from like 9 to 11. All the young guys were on the floor at 9 o'clock, 9.30. Demarcus did a ton of uh, movement stuff, um, court work, ball handling, shooting stuff um, on his own. But uh, he did not take part with the team. Um, and so he's, you know, we're just taking it slowly with him. But uh, I don't think it'll be too long before he's really taking part in practice. But for right now, it's important that he gets you know, his full workout. Steve, uh, Steph was saying yesterday that he felt like this was his best offseason in terms of just being able to rejuvenate his body and get some training. What, given that, what's your kind of sense of what that can be for him moving forward? Steph's in the prime of his life, you right. know, I mean, he just had a little boy and family's doing great and, you know, he's, uh, he's happy in, in every aspect and uh, I think he's also in his prime physically as an NBA player. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's in a good place. He looked great to him. What do you, uh, you know most of these guys, Steve, but what do you try to learn about your team in the first days and weeks? Um, this... Camp, every, every camp's a little different. Um, what we're learning in this camp, I think, is about our young guys. Um, not just um, uh, Looney and JB and DJ up front, but the other guards, um, Jacob Evans, Kendrick Nunn, um, other guys we brought in, Alfonso McKinney's a really interesting player. And so our vets, you know, they know this stuff down pat. So. So we're not going to learn much from them, but they all had great energy and uh, great leadership. There was great leadership on the floor from our vets and good energy from all the young guys. It was good. I kind of have a sense at the center spot that, you know, it's a it matchup base and three guys with three different skill sets. Would you preference me, though, that somebody like came out and just took the job? Um, I haven't even thought of it that way. You know, we've kind of done center by committee the last couple of years uh, where we've for the most part started you know, one guy but played multiple guys. Um, as long as we get it done, it uh, doesn't matter to me. But if somebody takes it, um, that's great. Steve, yesterday, well, yesterday after we spoke to you, Draymond played Steph they both kind of made it clear that their unsettled contract situations for yeah. the year ahead are about the furthest thing from their mind. They both want to be here for the long haul and that probably doesn't surprise you because that's not no, their and, focus. No, and we want them here for the long haul. But, you know, Bob said it best in the offseason, the summer. He said, especially these days in the NBA, you just take it year by year. Uh, so that's our focus is this year. Um, this will probably be the last time that I say anything about free agency for next year. It's a good question on the first day of practice because that's going to be looming. Um, but it will be looming for fans and media. It won't be looming for us. We're going to focus on this year and have a great time, have some fun, go out and try to do it again. And, um, we'll worry about all that other stuff later. Uh, Jordan, what's the difference between trying to motivate a team in the first day of training camp before the won a title and trying to motivate a team inside the success to get back looking for its third title in a row? I think the biggest difference is there's a sense um, when you've already won a title, there's a sense of uh, we know what we're doing. You know, we've, we've done it, we got this, but you've got to put forth the energy and the effort. Before you've won the title, I think there's more experimenting, there's more thought to what do we have to do better, you know, what, where do we have to make changes in order to get to the top. So 
Uh, we're in a great position, obviously, with, with um, a team that's, that's won back-to-back -back titles. It has most of the guys back. And so we're trying to keep keep things going more than anything. Jordan said that he struggled a lot with consistency last year. Uh, what, what do you want to see out of him this, this time, or what did you see out of him this time? Uh, I want to see um, what we saw all summer, which was great preparation, focus. Um, I think he understands now how hard he has to work. It's hard for a rookie to come in and understand what that means, what being a pro really means. But he gets it now. I think he's more committed than ever, and he's got to be more consistent as a player. But that starts on the practice floor. Again. How do you find that consistency as a basketball player? in your second year. How did I find it? Yeah. My coach never played me, so <laughs> I consistently clapped. Yeah, yeah. Jordan, uh, he works on his shot all the time. Uh, we're comfortable with him spacing out a little bit and taking a 12, 15 foot jump shot. And um, he's also a really smart player and very instinctive passer. We saw what he did in the playoffs last year, all the handbacks and stuff, where he's facing for a catch and one little. Uh, Back passes to snap and play. And it's good stuff. So what, is like is, what is it you like about Damian D? Uh, I like Damian's uh, um, length and uh, shooting ability. You know, he's a modern prototype wing, uh, 3 and D. Uh, he didn't practice much today because of the injury, but uh, he's got a lot of potential. He came into Oracle last year and played a really good game with the Hawks. And, uh, yeah, he's got a chance to uh, be a good NBA player. So Steph, this is who he is, right? But he was talking yesterday about how one of the ways to help him keep himself engaged is kind of setting mini goals for himself this season. Are there any mini goals for him that keep for, in mind for Steph? For Steph that yeah. I have? For yeah. Him? He said he wants to make a hole-in-one on his golf simulator in his garage. So <laughs> my goal is to help him make a, make a hole-in-one on the seventh hole at the Pebble Beach. But a downhill, 100-yard shot. Any golfer knows exactly the hole, one of the most famous holes right. ever. So he's going to get that this year. But no mini goals needed yeah. for it's all the It's the only way I can help him, to be honest with you. Steve, considering the, the extended length of the last four seasons, will you operate practices and shoot around a little bit different? I mean, with a lighter touch, or will it be the same? It will be feel. You know, for the first couple of weeks, I mean, I'm kind of told the guys today, too, as far as I'm concerned, training camp goes till the Seattle game. You know, we got about 10 days of really good hard work, um, a lot of drill work, a lot of foundational stuff with one game in that 10-day stretch. And once we get to Seattle, um, I think we'll have a good foundation. I think we'll be in really good shape, uh, hopefully good rhythm. And then we'll start to uh, start to scale back and, and see where we are. Folks in Seattle, and I'm not <coughs> like, I mean, the Seattle Storm just won a title, but it, basketball is a big deal up there. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the Sonics to me were uh, a lot like the Warriors here in the Bay. You know, really cool brand, uh, good history and tradition going back to the uh, championship in 79, just like the Warriors in 75. Great colors, uh, cool brand, and, and unbelievable fan base. I played there in the finals in 96 with the Bulls. And it was, it's a basketball town. And uh, I think it's, it's a real shame. You know, just the fact that the Sonics don't exist. Uh, it's one of, one of the franchises in this league to me that, uh, that not only makes sense, but uh, it feels like the NBA. So I think it was a real black mark on the NBA and uh, I'm hoping that the Sonics will be back at some point uh, in the near future. Do you remember, I think your last year you guys were, you were in Phoenix, the last Sonics year, you had a free seat there, and maybe if they're one of the early games that they were you at No. We had, a, I think, opening night in yeah, yeah. Seattle and Devin. I remember uh, yeah. Sean Marion talking about it. Devin. Sean was one of the best defenders in the league. Kevin was just a freaking water out there. I think he had like 25 points or something. 
Sean, Sean said after the game, man, that guy's going to be a problem. Yeah. He goes into that body. So you can see it. You can see it. What do you think, though, talking about uh, centers taking a 12-foot shot? I think you're going to have with, with Jordan if he develops, with David if he develops, and uh, DeMarcus when he comes back. Is the center that can't shoot that consistently, what does that do for your offense? Well, we saw it with David West. David is a great shooter at the elbows. And, uh, so we know what, what, what that added dimension does. We've never had a, a center who could shoot threes like DeMarcus. Uh, we think Damien, once he gets comfortable, can make that foul on a 17-footer. Uh, Jordan's working hard on it, too, so it always helps these days, especially when people defend. you got five guys out there who can shoot. Big plus. Is he an analytics guy? Yeah, Cabale. Okay. Uh, he was here last year. Okay. So he was groomed under Sammy a little bit? Or, or he was at University of Washington. Uh, Last year was his first year. He was with Sammy. Okay. So it's a similar, similar yeah. style. Yeah, same way. Okay. Can a district meaning of this repeat? Can that be a motivation after all you were done? All you done? Think, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think our motivation is history. We know, we know how special it would be. Um, Historically, if we did it, only a handful of teams have ever done it. But that's not our focus. Our focus is to really enjoy it while it lasts. And uh, nothing lasts forever. So you know that. And we want to go out this year and uh, enjoy every every step of the way. Is this your version of last uh, dance? Uh, <laughs> I hope not. I, ho I hope we keep dancing. The, 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 the mentality that Phil Jackson mentioned when... Yeah, I think, I think the difference is with Phil in 98, you know, we all were free agents and we all knew we were all going to be gone, including Phil. Um, so we're not in that same position. We do have plenty of free agents, but you know, we're not looking at this as the final, final dance. So, like I said, we want to have some fun and enjoy what we have this year and then move on from there. All right. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sue.